Hey everyone, this is Kenji, and these are Beats. Um, I love Beats. I didn't used to love Beats when I was a kid. Um, I remember eating them at a um, at a at a potluck. Um, the first time I had one was at a potluck, and I think they came out of a can, and they were served in a salad with um, boiled eggs or something, um, overboiled eggs. They were not very good. Um, I'm going to show you the method I learned how to cook beets that got me to love beets. Um, what we're doing is we're going to make a beet salad. So it's going to be beets. It'll be some citrus. It'll be some arugula, a dressing uh, with some nuts, um, and then maybe some cheese in there also. But really, the important part, the important takeaway here is the method we're using to, to, to cook the beets. Um, when you cook them like this, they come out sweet. They come out tender come out earthy you know it's kind of like like dirt dirt candy you know beets are just so good beets just cannot be um bested beets cannot be bettered no that there's a word for it i can't think of it anyhow beets so we're going to take our beets we're going to fold them in the little foil pouch like this so what we're going to do is first fold up the edges and what you want to use here is heavy duty foil important heavy duty foil not the normal stuff because the normal stuff will leak and the important part here is that we want to trap in steam uh, so we're kind of steam roasting them. So you're going to fold up the edges like that. So now we got the beets in a nice little pouch. Um, and you can use any kinds of beets here. I'm using these kind of baby beets from the farmer's market. Um, but this works with, you know, you can do a, a bigger sheet of foil to do a lot of beets. You can do big beets, small beets. It doesn't really matter. This works for any beets. Um, so now you take thyme or any herb, really. I use thyme and rosemary usually um, just because I like the flavor. And I like I think the, the, they complement the earthiness of the beets nicely. Um, and then we're going to take some olive oil. Just drizzle it in that pouch like that. And take some salt. Sprinkle it in there like that. More oil. Then we're gonna take some black pepper. Freshly cracked black pepper. Very simple. Give it a very gentle toss, not so much that you break the pouch. And that's it. Now we fold over the top. You crimp it up a little bit. You fold the edges in. Give it another couple folds. You really want to make sure that there's no air that's going to um, leak out. And you're going to see as this goes, it's going to kind of puff up. And now we put it on a tray like that. And we stick it in the oven. Um, I'm going to do it in the toaster oven. You can do it in a regular oven. Um, a toaster oven I find easier for a smaller amount of things like this. Uh, 350 degrees. All right. And those go in there and they close. And then we're going to come back in an hour or so. Um, so it's been about an hour. The uh, beets, so, you know, with small beets like that, it could take 45 minutes to an hour. With larger beets, it could take much longer. Um, it's a very forgiving method though. So it's all right if they go a little bit longer, you know, if you if you forget about them for a bit, it's fine. Um, it's gonna take a while for them to really overcook. So what you wanna do now is feel them and feel if they're soft. And if they do feel pretty soft, to that, you know, if they're still rock hard, let them go back in there. But if they feel like they give a little, you know, like sort of like an avocado give, a ripe avocado or a ripe, say, like a banana, then you can go ahead and poke them with a skewer just to really check. And if the skewer goes all the way through with little to no resistance, um, then you're done. Now, all we're, gonna, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take them out. I'm gonna throw them on this uh, plate. Um, looks like there's a little leakage, and that's fine. Um, now, while those beets rest, I'm gonna, uh, I'm just gonna throw some nuts in here. Um, nuts and beets go well together. Um, these are pine nuts. You could use pistachios, you could use hazelnuts, you could use almonds. Um, I'm just gonna throw those into the same oven that the beets were in. Um, meanwhile, I'm gonna make a quick dressing here. <clears throat> so, with beets, I like to do a little bit of honey, which I already have out. Um, I'm gonna do some, I want some sherry vinegar, I think, if I have it. No, maybe I don't have any. I got red wine vinegar, that'll do. Uh, sherry vinegar, yeah, some regular sherry. Yeah, you know, we'll do some, with a little red wine vinegar, a little balsamic vinegar. Yeah, that'll do. A little red wine, a little balsamic. <clears throat> this is just a kind of cheap old balsamic. Um, actually, you know what we'll do? I'll do a little balsamic and I'll do some lemon. There's our lemon and we got a shallot. Little guy. So the thing I like about beets a lot um, is that they're good room temperature and they're good cold. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're kind of like uh, like a Spanish tortilla or kind of like a, uh, 
you know, steak. It's good, it's good hot, it's good room temperature, it's good cold. Um, so what you can do is you can roast a bunch of beets without any plans for them and just throw them in the fridge. Um, and then when you want beets, you got beets um, ready to go like in a salad. You can dice them up and, and uh, reheat them in a skillet with some olive oil. Um, you know, I think really the best way to enjoy them though is just in a simple salad like this. Um, in my book, I've got a couple of different beet salad recipes. Um, my book being the Food Lab. Um, <clears throat> or over on Serious Eats, I've got a couple beet salad recipes. The sort of real classic, modern classic, I don't know if it's an old classic, but the real modern classic is beets, uh, goat cheese, and uh, citrus pistachios um, also, some kind of nuts in there. Um, so, but we're gonna, we're gonna do some you know, sort of variation on that. So we're, we are gonna do beets and nuts and citrus, um, but in our case, the citrus is gonna be this Cara Cara orange. And the nuts are gonna be pine nuts, pinoles, because that's what I had. You can use, um, I really love hazel, like a nice hazelnut vinaigrette, or if you wanna get fancy, you can call them filberts. Um, I've been teaching my daughter to call them, to call them filberts instead of hazelnuts. Filberts and goobers instead of peanuts. So you can see, I'm just cutting kind of around here, trying to get as much of the white pith off as possible while still without losing too much of the flesh inside. There's gonna be a little bit of loss, that's inevitable. Now, <clears throat> if I was at a fancy restaurant right now, in the kitchen at a fancy restaurant, um, like the kinds of places I used to work, um, what I would do is I would cut out supremes. So essentially, so what I would do, let me get a small, get a little bowl for these. <clears throat> what I would do is I would cut basically in between each layer of pith like that. And you get what's called a supreme. So it's a completely like pith and membrane free segment of fruit. Um, that said, I am not in a fancy restaurant right now, and I don't really mind having the pith in my fruit, so I'm gonna split them in half that way, split them again this way, and then I'm just going to... And that is gonna be the, the citrus part of the citrus and beet salad. Ooh, you know what I'll do for cheese? Um, I know what I'll do, I have some Labne leftover, we'll use that. That's gonna be delicious. Mmm. All right, so labne, we got our <clears throat> little shallot there. A little touch of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna do honey, I think honey or brown sugar or date syrup, some kind of sweet thing works really well with beets because it just, you know, it just kind of enhances the natural sweetness. Brings out the natural sweetness of beets. Sometimes you find that with, you know, sometimes you want contrasting flavors with foods and other times you want complementary flavors. So sometimes, you know, like a beet is naturally a little sweet. Uh, and if you can somehow enhance that sweetness with like another type of sweetness, um, you know, like the sweetness of honey is different from the sweetness of beets. Um, what it does is it actually makes the beet, it doesn't compete with the sweetness of the beet. It actually sort of makes the beet taste beetier, if you know what I mean. Um, makes your beets extra beady. Some lemon. I got a seed in there, but I don't care. That's going to be a surprise reward for whoever finds it. <clears throat> um, So I like to put my, um, if I'm making a vinaigrette like this, I just put my bowl on top of a pan with a towel in it so it doesn't move. That way I can very carefully whisk in my, my olive oil. So going relatively slow so that we get like a nice, I don't care if it's like a full, em full on emulsion here. I just don't want it to be completely broken oil and vinegar separate, you know? And what's nice is honey, because it adds viscosity to the mix, um, actually makes it easier to emulsify your dressing. And 
we go. Not quite perfectly emulsified, but good enough. Good enough for our purposes. All right, so now these beets, they're not completely cooled, but they're probably cool enough to handle. Mmm, they smell great. Yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, peeling beets, super, super easy. Um, just a little bit of cool running water. I know I can hear the water police now, but I'm just gonna go quick. Um, and then you wanna take your thumb and just push off the peels. They come right off. And then you kind of push on the end and the top end and whatever comes off with you, that's what comes off. And whatever stays behind, that's what you can eat. This is the major appeal of this method. This is why this method can't be bettered. Mm -hmm. This is why this method cannot be improved upon. Can't be... I still don't know that word. What word am I thinking of? You know what word I'm thinking of. Bested. Hmm. One-upped. I'm not really sure. Something right on the tip of my tongue. I can feel it at my I can feel it at my fingertips, that word I'm looking for. Alright. So we got our beets there. The rest of that stuff is gonna go into the compost. Um, I live in Northern California, by the way, and so here in the Bay Area, compost gets collected uh, by the city, which is why I don't have to worry about what I'm going to do with it afterwards. So people who are asking me, what do I do with my compost? The answer is I put it out on the sidewalk with all my other bins, um, and then the city collects it. And what's nice is that it's a you know municipal compost system, so it actually um, you're allowed to put in meat, you're allowed to put in soiled uh, cardboard and paper paper products. Um, you can put in all kinds of things that you wouldn't want to put in your normal compost. Um, all right, there we go. So we got our beets. I'm gonna get a separate board for them because I don't want to stain my other board red. Um, if you're really, really nervous about getting your boards, your board stained, um, you can put like a layer of plastic wrap down on top of here. But I don't really see the need. I'm gonna keep them nice and kind of chunky here. So these are still pretty hot, but eh, not too hot. Warm. Warmish. You can let them cool completely if you want. Actually, we're probably not going to eat this until tonight. I'm trying. I'm making some coal oven pizza tonight. Well, some New Haven style pizza. I'm going to try loading up one of my ovens with coal to see if I can get that New Haven flavor. Although, to be honest, like the real test is going to be, I'm going to do it with coal, I'm going to do it with gas. I want to see if you can actually taste the difference between coal and gas, because I'm pretty convinced you're not going to be able to taste the difference. All right, and this, these can go straight into the dressing. <clears throat> oh, people sometimes ask me about my sponges. So the way I do my sponges, I have uh, one sponge. Well, usually one sponge. Right now it's two sponges for some reason. It's two sponges that are meant for surfaces that we eat off of. So cutting boards, um, uh, plates, you know, pots and pans. And then one sponge for counters uh, and things that we don't necessarily eat off. And then the sink is a kind of in-between space. Um, I, uh, what I'll do is, you know, we'll, we'll use the sink normally. Um, and then if I know that I'm going to be putting food into it, I will disinfect it and clean it with one of my, one of my, you know, countertop, well, sorry, one of my cutting board sponges. Uh, and if I know I'm not going to, then I will use my counter sponge. All right. What are we doing here now? Oh, let's check on those nuts. Perfect. Those look great. Oh shoot. I got to go to a meeting. All right. I got to go to a meeting. But that's all right. That's going to chill down to cool down to room temperature while I'm at my meeting, and I will be back in about about another hour. Um, I'm sorry, I had a phone meeting that just had, uh, there was an interview with some um, some students at MIT uh, who wanted to talk to me about I don't know for oh, they have a they have a magazine called Hackster Chop or something like that, a food magazine at MIT, student run food magazine, and they wanted to interview me. Um, that was fun. Anyhow, back. So the beets are now totally cool um, and uh, totally cool. And uh, I've got my pine nuts in there. I'm, I'm just going to chop up some parsley. I'm 
I don't know why I'm chopping this with a paring knife, um, just because it's there. I'm gonna toss that in there too. Um, Parsley's great with beets. Uh, tarragon, also great with beets. Um, Chervil's great with beets. Chives are great with beets. Dill is great with beets. What's not great with beets? I don't know, there's a lot of things that are great with beets. Almost everything's better with a good beet to it. All right, now we get our labne. Um, so what else am I gonna stick in here? Oh, um, maybe I'll stick in some of this onion, actually. This I'm not gonna use my paring knife for. I need this onion, I got this onion I need to kind of use up because it's been sitting there for a while. I'm just gonna trim off the little bits that have dried off. That's, that's a good amount, maybe a little bit more. Onion and citrus, I, red onion and citrus I think goes really well together. Um, uh, Polly G's in New York, uh, my old friend Polly G, he, um, he has a salad on his menu that's um, oranges and onions and parsley with some olive oil and it's delicious and that's like basically it, oranges and onions, it's really good. Um, anything that goes well with citrus goes well with beech, beets. That's looking good there. Let's get a plate for this. I'll do it on this guy. So labne, as I showed you in my labne video, you really wanna stir it up nice and good, kind of whip it. In this video, we're gonna whip it and we're gonna beat it. Okay, let's get a nice, nice glob here, I'll do a little one of these thingies. Do a little, a little bit more. A nice little landing spot for the beet. What would also be excellent here is if you had some goat cheese and you whipped it up like that. That would be great. All right, now I'm gonna get my, gonna get my beets on. I'm gonna do this the sloppy way. Get some citrus in there. Let them kind of fall where they may. All right, and there's these beets. I'll do the be a little bit more neat with it. You know, I come from. The last time I worked in a restaurant, um, aside from my own, the last time I worked in like a fancy restaurant was the was pre tweezer days. Like nobody used tweezers back then, but now I feel like everybody uses tweezers, those giant giant tweezers. Uh, I just can't get used to them. I like I like the old school spoon and fingers, spoon and finger approach. <laughs> Tumbley. Come on, let's play. My daughter watches Tumble Leaf, which is an amazing show. Um, it's on Amazon, Amazon Prime. It's an amazing show, uh, animated kids show, like puppet animation. She watches Tumble Leaf. She doesn't like watching the opening intro, though. So what she does sometimes is if she's in that room watching it um, and the intro comes on, she'll come out of the room and search the house for either me um, or her mom. Um, and ask us to skip the intro. And then of course, by the time we get back to the room, the intro is already done and it's exactly where she wants it to be. Um, so I guess, I guess in a way her technique works. Um, she does miss the intro every time. So I guess that's a good thing. All right, a little bit more olive oil. Let's use a little bit of fresh cracked pepper too. And I think that is a pretty grand looking little salad. We're gonna eat this with our pizza tonight. I'm gonna try some over here. Shaba, I know you're gonna want some beets. Hmm, it is grand. I love beets. Did I tell you I like beets? Because I love them. I love them. Hmm. 
beats have this quality that it, it just can't be. What is that word again? Hmm. We'll remember it soon. Here you go, Shabu. Sit. Oh. Right by your foot. It just can't be. I know what it is. It just can't be.